begin tonight with the crisis in Puerto Rico. The administration trying to counter a narrative that it has been slow to act as the mounting nightmares at the port of San Juan continue really by the hour. The president's Homeland Security Advisor Tom Bossert will join us here in a moment and explain the federal response and where it is tonight. Leading off our coverage, though, Chief White House Correspondent John Roberts with a report on how President Trump is taking steps to get more help to Puerto Rico faster by waiving restrictions in an obscure law about foreign cargo ship access to U.S. ports. Good evening, John. Brad, good evening to you. It was a charge that deeply wounded both Bush administrations, the accusation of being slow to react to a hurricane. And with those same charges now being leveled at the Trump administration, the White House today came out swinging. The White House pushed back today against criticism that its response to Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico has been, as one Democratic member of Congress put it, ineffective and inexcusably slow. Homeland Security Advisor Tom Bossard saying some news reports are lagging behind. A lot of the reporting is understandably not wrong, but dated. Administration officials insist that response efforts are moving as quickly as possible. 10,000 federal workers, including 7,200 U.S. military, are on the ground there. Three-star General Jeffrey Buchanan has been sent to oversee the response, and the hospital ship USS Comfort is steaming for Puerto Rico. Distribution from the island, the central ports, to the endpoints like the hospitals has been a challenge. We had to remove debris. We had to restore roads. We had to clear land, landslides across the island. And we have done things like airdrops in the meantime. This morning, at the request of Puerto Rico's governor, President Trump granted a 10-day waiver of the Jones Maritime Act to allow foreign flag vessels to ferry supplies from U.S. ports to Puerto Rico. But the Homeland Security Advisor insists there had been no lack of capacity to get relief supplies in. And I wasn't recommending to the president that he waive the Jones Act at the time uh, until I got the governor's request. Uh, but once the governor calls and says proactively, as I see out into the future on the horizon, then I think that we should listen to him. And the president completely agrees. The White House was also defending the president's new tax reform plan today in the face of criticism that it's a huge tax break for the wealthiest Americans. Chief Economic Advisor Gary Cohn insisting it is aimed at middle-income Americans. A typical family earning $100,000 with two children that has been a standard deductor, who uses the standard deduction, continues to use the standard deduction, they can expect a tax cut of about $1,000. Critics, including some Republicans, say the elimination of the state and local tax deduction could mean middle-income families in high-tax states like New York, Connecticut, and California could end up paying more tax. Cohen said while most wouldn't, some could. You could find me someone in the country that their taxes may not go down. We have all different types of structures in the tax code. I guarantee you, I guarantee you, you could find someone in this country, maybe one person who their taxes may not go, go down. And the White House could not say that measures like eliminating the alternative minimum tax would not have benefited President Trump, who in 2005 paid $31 million in AMT. Cohen suggesting that's American, not what American taxpayers care about. American taxpayers care about what they take home. They care about what they have to spend. That's what they care about. That's what I care about. A family getting back a $1,000 tax cut just might care if a billionaire is getting back tens of millions of dollars. But Cohen says when you factor in the elimination of the state and local tax deduction, the AMT becomes irrelevant. Cohen also was asked why he stayed at the White House over after the whole Charlottesville debacle. He said it was for the once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to reform the American tax code. Brett? John, we're getting ready to hear from the Health and Human Services Secretary Tom Price as he's apologized uh, for these private flights. What is the reaction there at the White House? I know the president's been asked about this a couple times. Well, we, we do know that it was in the works uh, this afternoon when Sarah Huckabee Sanders was asked about it, that the Health and Human Services Secretary, uh, former Congressman Tom Price, would be paying back out of his own pocket some $51,000 of more than $400,000 in private charter use uh, that uh, he engaged in over the last Last few months. Uh, but when Sarah Huckabee Sanders was asked about whether or not Tom Price uh, should be worried about his job, she said, We want to wait to see what the outcome of the investigations by not only the investigator, the inspector general, but also an internal HHS investigation before they make a determination. The president, I got to say yesterday, though, Brett, seemed very displeased with what his Health and Human Services secretary had been engaged in when it comes to this travel. And when he turned around and said, We'll see in response to, Will he be fired? Uh, uh, that was pretty telling. But other people have fallen uh, uh, out with the president and they've survived. So maybe Tom Price will as well. 
We will see. How about that? John Roberts live on the North Lawn. John, thanks.